Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium, welcome back to Rubber Show, welcome back to the Matinees District and welcome back to a basement? Yes, so we're in the basement underneath the bookstore as far as I can tell. Plaisance thinks there is a curse down here and a malignant entity if we bring up our journal. Investigate doomed commercial area. People say the commercial building on the plaza is cursed. No business will ever thrive there without going bankrupt. You promised Plaisance so you look into it. Enter the sealed door behind the bookstore and find out what happened to the companies there. Search for the malignant entity. Plaisance says she lives inside the chimney. Find a way in. I think we have actually found the way in. So if we go back. Uh, we have found down here. We found the antique Belmagrave rifle. I don't know what that's going to get us at the moment. But yeah, uh, we have a few other things in here. Someone has stuck busted guns beneath the ceiling. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Ah, oh, okay. So we found a fridge last time in the shape of a angry and somewhat scary bear. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Interesting. Oh, what's here? Ooh. Nose of Fed, which gives us plus one health. And 70 cents. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Ah. Uh... I would we want the fridge seems like it's still running. The black one, the ice cream maker, leave. Is the ice cream maker nearby? It doesn't seem like it's doing anything. Hmm, okay. Oh, insane mesh tank top, take it. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. Ooh. Alright, that looks like the way out. What else is down here? Oh, we do have down. Ooh, money. Ooh. 45 cents. A cellar window. People's feet shuffling by on the street. Alright, where does the red cable go? Uh, there is... Oh, the cables? Is that the ice cream maker? Is there another one down here? I'm not entirely sure. Let's go over here. There's other... Oh, there's other ice cream makers. So, last time we banged on this. The bear fridge seems okay. Is there anything else back here? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Why don't we unplug the ice cream maker? Because then the fridge is a fridge. It doesn't make ice. But if the ice cream maker is frozen, there might be something in it? Question mark? Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Uh, unplug the black cable. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Hmm. I don't know why I unplugged it. I do things without any reason. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. And we could unplug the giant red cable or plug in the black cable. I'm gonna leave. So something near so that's the ice cream maker. It's not doing anything? Hmm. Okay. Oh, we need to go back up anyway. I don't know where that goes, but let's go back up. So if we can find the door and see what the malignant entity is up in the top of the building. Alright, let's see if we can find the malignant entity that lives in the chimney. I think it's this way. Oh yeah, the door's open. Because we broke our hand on that last time, which is why we have one last health. This tray is full of dice. Colourful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. 
The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Hello, I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shimmering through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Hold on. What do you mean by milieu? Yes, a milieu is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Hmm. Never mind, I'll be back later. Why are you asking me about dice? You must have confused me with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Hmm, interesting. Sure, I like role-play games. I need some dice. Maybe I'm not really sure why I'm here, honestly. Uh, no, I was looking for something else. Squint your eyes mysteriously. Answers. I'm not interested in buying dice right now. A police officer, I need to ask some questions. Um. Hmm. Mysteriously answers. Sure, I like roleplay games and I need some dice. Ooh. Uh. Yeah, sure. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedro dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. She's thankful for the security they provide her. Hmm. Okay. Where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Create here. The lieutenant looks around the spacious room, its ceiling fading into shadows above. Hmm. I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people called it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Hmm. Plaisance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that this place is swarming with malicious energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Hmm, 
actually the bookstore isn't doing well. There are hardly any customers and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. Oh, wow. Uh, the curse is just biding its time. I don't know why the bookstore hasn't gone bankrupt yet. That's why I'm here to investigate. Mm, I don't know why the bookstore, uh, bookstore hasn't gone bankrupt yet. All right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Hmm. No, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitress just took off and customers have trouble paying bills. And then there is me. She sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there, scattered, from knives to carving files and wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? I'll be first to admit, there are many inconsistencies in this so-called curse. I was just about to ask, what do you think? Do you think the curse is real? Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I'm starting to see there is no curse, only business decisions and natural market fluctuations. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? Ooh, we can do a shivers check. Very low. It is a white check. Why has no business failed? Mmm. Yeah, that's too, too low. That's a 97% chance of failure. Uh, do you know what happened to the other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. It's not about the haircut. It's about the confidence. Hmm. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customer should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the headscarf. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at-risk youth away from drugs and crime. And who was Artemiteps? A kind man, from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. And how did that community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Mm, cool, very cool. About the debris, but what is a snuff media? Mm, it's a shame about those windows. I'm not even going to ask about the milieu. I'm going to ask it because somebody will. So cool, very cool. What's a snuff milieu? It's a sub-Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. 
Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub-browsers. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Anything else? I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. I didn't know insects had any rights, or activists. Yeah, the atelier didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the occident, where it's extracted from bitter wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Hmm, they got what they deserved? Making clothes out of beetle wings is a terrible idea. But insects don't have any brains or feelings. I'm glad that someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. Oh, interesting. Uh, you like insects, you don't care about insects, and the business was terrible. Um, I'm glad someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. Hmm, really? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> She looks at the windowsill, where a dead fly is lying on its back, legs curled up, and a bow tie. Poor guy. Suddenly, you get a feeling that insects are important to the case somehow. It's hard to say why. What's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind their curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Really? They must have been on a they must have been on a gigantic ego trip. From what I've seen so far the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. Hmm, you're right. They should have just tried harder. They had everything. 
that ha they had everything needed to succeed. Still, not everyone is going to make it. That's the nature of the game. She tosses a pair of dice on the tabletop. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic dis desk. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes, like snowfall. Anything else? Uh, there was a terrifying taxidermid bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees, like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed. What were the other ideas? Alright. What about the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dare to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Hmm, what did they expect? 20 cents per hour as dogs, but I'm surprised they showed up to work at all. Oh, but they did. They did show up to work, and not alone. There were also acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the ice cream stand. And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if, as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents apiece, out of regular fridges. Hmm. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. Maybe. Because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't doing his best, I mean. How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. What's a vision beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. I don't do drugs. I do drugs. I've got a vision, vision beast myself. Oh, horrific necktie. I don't have a comment on drugs. Grab your necktie and mumble. Not now, you beast. Hmm. I don't have a comment on drugs. Understandable. You shouldn't do them. You're a police officer after all. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad, finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the afternoon air. Her eyes follow it idly. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. Actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Uh, what do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's not sorry to disappoint you. 
Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes off the work to look out of the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Uh, we can ask more questions about the building. Just can't do very much with shivers. We can order a dice, but I don't think we need to order a dice just yet. Um, oh, if we buy a board game, it's missing a dice, and that's okay. Uh, I have more questions about this building. I'm listening. No, I think okay. We we've, we've been here, so actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Uh, let's just leave. Wow, you work hard. I do. Oh yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I guess I do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse. For hard work. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco-Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. I guess I've made some girls for sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? No, I'm actually not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? There's a market for corrupt cops out there, but immigrant cops have price dumped it. Uh, taxes, man. I don't know. Why am I so poor? It's because guy guy's riding my ass. The system is broken. Mm, I don't know. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Really? Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass. They got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax, alimony. One tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus there's the stuff people in other countries pay for. That makes them ask for more money from you. Here. Total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. Mm. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? 
This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market type. Opt out. Bleeding nipples are kind of a pain. But how will deregulation help with that? Opt in, but only a little. No way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Opt in. Mmm. It sounds kind of communist. This isn't helping me solve my money problem, and it's only making me into a free market type. Opt out. What are you, a racist? Don't be a racist. Be a cool immigrant, ultra-liberal free market advocate. Ride or die. Keep it street. Uh, ultra-liberal? Well, that's not communist, so... Well, if I'm not being an ultra-liberal makes me a racist, then I guess I should be an ultra-liberal. Opt in. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. Oh, we got another thought. Indirect modes of taxation. So, uh, research bonus. Negative two empathy. Cold-blooded. Ooh, that's just the research. So, first, if you have a side bitch ideology cooking somewhere, don't sweat it. Fighting indirect taxation for the gossamer state is incompatible with all creeds. It's cool like that. You're a cool anarchist now. Unless you don't want to be an anarchist. Whatever. Stuff this meal ticket in your eye socket and let's see if we can steal some love back from the robber barons at the customs agency and the banditos at the Insulindian Financial Oversight and Competition Committee. Uh, what does that give us? Can we... Actually, I don't really know what that gives us. We would have to unlock... Oh, do we have... Can we unlock one? Do we have a point? We can. Okay. So let us put in... Internalize indirect modes of taxation. Hmm. All right. Yeah, let's see how that works out. Uh, what else? We probably need to take to play Sans. And it's 20 real per day. Do we have enough? 1885. Okay, so we've paid for tonight. Uh, paid guard for tonight. So I think we can probably talk to Plaisance. Mm, how do we get out of here? That is a question. Also, was there something about drugs in a speed bag? Let's see. Uh, speed bag. Mm, we can't interact with it. It's not an interactable. Okay. Hey, uh, Plaisance? Ooh, we're gonna have negative two empathy. Oh, empathy's still plus one. So Psyche Basis plus four, bonus from thoughts, negative two, Ledger of Failing, Hatred plus one. Oh, wait, what? Empathy is plus one. Oh, so our bonus would, we, we, we would be on zero. Oh, okay. Hey, Plaisance? You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus? The dark sarcophagus paused dramatically. Yes, yes. How was it? It was a charnel house of failed business enterprises leeching life energy from this bookstore. Honestly, a dump. Nothing to see there, just heaps of garbage. Someone should let the sunshine in. I am in no position to give out personal opinions. Oh, honestly, it's a dump. Nothing to see there. But, what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the... Entity? I talked to the... Entity you told me about. Her name's Nia, and she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. She's not a sorceress or some malicious entity. She's a businesswoman like you. I don't understand. If it's not her, 
then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? She looks perplexed. She's squeezing on the pendant too tight. A drop of blood in her palm. Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire. Oh, I like drama. You've come this far. You know how to end it. There is an entity behind the entity. Hmm. There is another entity, more malignant, pulling the strings in the in matinees. Perhaps in my travels, I will cross paths with it. Honestly, I don't have any ans answers yet. There are still leads to be followed, like that strange radio computer thing. We can lie. The source is in the taxidermist shop. He became involved in the dark arts, arts darker than taxidermy, and brought the void spirits down upon this place. She says there is no curse because there are too many inconsistencies. Oh, there is another dark, uh, there is another entity, more malignant, pulling the strings and matinees. Perhaps in my travels I will cross paths with it. A third order presence, yes. She lets go of the pendant. I've heard of these triactors. In certain occult literature, that's too dark to dwell on for too long, and definitely not in public. She gestures for you to be silent. I understand everything, sir. Thank you for your descending into the maelstrom. I will keep fort up here, strengthen the wards, do my best. And if you happen upon the third entity in your travels, may the Lord be with you. She performs an X-shaped cross on her chest. Well, this has been absolutely educational. If we happen on the third presence in our travels, we will certainly come back to tell you. Yes, the venture continues in other waters, darker waters. Should we get out of here before the vortex collapses? Farewell for now, book peddler. Ooh, we got another skill point. Okay, so we have one skill point which we can spend. Excellent. Well, it's good because we just spent a skill point. Um, indirect modes of taxation. So the time will go down, but only when we talk to people. So that's fine. Okay. So where to now? So we don't need the... Oh, what's this? Plus one drama. Insane mesh tank top. Oh, interesting. White tank top, plus one physical instrument. Uh, negative one half-life, plus one suggestion. We currently got plus one esprit de corps. Uh, we probably don't need... Okay, yeah, we, we don't need um, the torch out. Sorry, flashlight. We don't need the flashlight out. Okay. I wonder if that's where we would have gone... Oh yeah, the door. I think that would have gone in and out from the basement there. We probably need to look at the body. Hmm. So the body's still up in the tree. Uh, we tried over here. We tried this. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. So there's a red check. We would need to put skill points into perception to open this white check. Oh, it's a white check, sorry. Uh, we could do that. What is our perception? Perception. It's not too bad. Perception's too... I think Inland Empire and Perception probably work quite well together. Uh, do we do it? Let's do it. I mean, sure. Let's try it again. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because it's nice and orderly, well-laid palette, easy on the eyes. It reveals no secrets at this time. All right, 
So we just damaged our morale. Let's heal the morale a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can do anything with the body. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Endurance le legendary. But we have volumetric shit compressor. So we get a plus six. Let's try it. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. Step closer. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? They're armor. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Interesting. The armor is... Armor is the British spelling. But Kim is a lieutenant. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Zirconium. Is that... Artificial diamond? Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. The lieutenant draws in a line in the condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. And that's a lock, I take it. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. He nods towards the red-haired boy, eyeing you suspiciously. Hmm, understood. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint, organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like whirls of floorboards, the design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross sections would look like. Run your finger over the lines. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, 
where you notice. The worlds are in the shape of a letter and number combination. E50, 100, 1000. Looks like there's a serial number on the right sabaton. Good. Can you read it to me? He tips the drawing ball point of his pen on his tongue. E50, 100, 1000. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. Mmm, pull the boot off. Mmm, back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Yeah, I think since everything runs down, those boots are probably soupy. Uh, inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. The can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pin. I'm sorry, what? In a... I can't come up with anything other than a harbour? Like in a harbour? Like in a circus for transporting black spotted giraffes? Uh... Sure, like in a circus for transporting black spotted giraffes. Uh, no, more like in a uh, harbor, like the one just east of here. I get a sense they used whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. They sure wanted him to stay here. The poly polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester, it's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. We're assuming dock workers from the harbour did it? Yes. The debrief we got from the Wild Pines representative appears to be solid too. A lynching is what this looks like. Our internal RCM brief said the same. He looks at you. By the way, when you get the chance, perhaps you should ask me to share the RCM brief with you. I'm pretty sure you've forgotten it. Oh, Kim. I have forgotten that. How did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points the buckle, tying the belt to the branch above. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? Point to the one at the side of the tree. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Mm, back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. Inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars? I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. 
A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Let the lieutenant work. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting, then... A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of colour pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. The, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. On it, a colour-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. Cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. This was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter to us. Now, if we could find someone to decipher it. Hmm, say nothing. Here, a souvenir. Don't lose it. Ah. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no longer than the pack of cigarettes. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colourful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Inland Empire, tell me who you are, dead man. I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Where is that? In the past, way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you! Your wild imagination is doing this! Ask some more of those questions you love so much! Thanks, Nectai. He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoonie. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting up B now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Rooney is obviously not who I am. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. You might be onto something there. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? 
Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in Provocopo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Maybe this will lead to something. Something indescribable, unforeseen, miraculous. <sighs> the clown lips and the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you slowly. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest. And it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Yeah, enough. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Okay, that's not what is written there. Uh, squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. Stop. Relax your eyes. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. So how do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Uh, step back and have another look first. Uh, we've been thorough. Do you have a plan for getting him down? Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Uh, can't someone else do it? We could saw the branch when we don't have a saw. Seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. We could shoot him down. We could ask for help from the harbour. I'm out of ideas. Let's have another look at him. Maybe we could shoot him down. I think Kim has a gun. Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? Mmm, just shoot the belt. The bullet will break it. It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. Mm, wait, let me try. Say nothing, let him choose. I don't know how, maybe it's better. Okay, back off. Actually, this is a bad idea. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst that could happen? I'll blow his head off. Take it! Take the shot! Yeah, take the shot! Kuno wants some of that shit! Silence. With his elbow sharp, the Lieutenant unzips his jacket. Oh no. And produces a lightweight <laughs> firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Say nothing. He's gonna fucking me! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements 
a cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? It's okay, man. Kuno's sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Beano cloud. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun in his hand. Hmm, try again maybe? No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim remains uncompromised. He looks around at the windows overlooking the yard. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. Mm, what now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. <laughs> I can try to shoot him down myself. No. Um... Maybe we can ask for help from the harbour. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appear to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Yeah, wait, well, let's reconsider. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. We could saw the branch? Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way. With less falling down of trees. Huh. Um, out of ideas, let's have another look at him. Hmm. I have something I need to know, corpse man. Of course. You have questions, don't you? Okay, the power of your imagination is at your service. Yeah, there's nothing we can do here, so... Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Hmm. I can talk to the kid. Okay, uh... Kuno's got this! The boy throwing rocks to the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh yeah, Nappa Goofy Kuno! Yells the other kid behind the fence. Hmm... Hey kid, a word, police business. Right in the dick, Kuno! Get him right in the dick! The children ignore you. It's loving in the dick! The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Hmm, hold on. What does that mean? The kid is obviously high. Stop using slurs on my crime scene. That's not how we do it. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! Kuno's riding at sea. He wipes sweat from his brow and sends on the rock flying. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. Mm, Kim, what should we do? Are you kids siblings? Kids, you want to hang out? I'm not a narc. Look, I have questions for you. Or I don't have... Kim, Kim, what should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. Look, I have questions for you. Alright, 
entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The body. What do you know about it? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Uh, Kim, help me out here. What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. Where's the rest of his armor? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? Kuno's fuck has got one big thing wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. A mutant? Look at him. Fucking gross hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. What do you mean you threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. He performs a kickoff on the imaginary helmet. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. You threw it in the sea? Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. Who do you mean troubadour? Yeah, cock in boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit. Came around pretending like he cares about cows. So yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep of Kuro's armor. Go to the gate. Ask him yourself. Yes, this troubadour has it. You can feel it. Do you know how I got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happening? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. Uh, okay. Where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He looks around, trying to come up with something. Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. You're in Cyberpunk 2020. Where is Night City? Kuno gives this info out on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. Do you know who he was? Kuno's fuck gimp. Kuno uses the fuck gimp for target practice. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! Hmm, more on this later right now. Let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f- Hmm, about the crime scene, do you kids often play in this yard? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Mm, the ladder. Have a climb it. Point to the ladder on the tree. Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! So you would say that the ladder is... unclimbable? Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat! The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Hmm... What's in the greenhouse over there? Dunno. Keep that gardener used to work there. Hold on, the gardener used to work there. Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit's nothing to Kuno. Wait, what did you mean by kept? Look it up in the library. Kuno's not a fucking dictionary. Fucking small brain. Kuno means the gardener, alright? You mean the young woman by the whirling in rags, that gardener? Look, Kuro doesn't explain shit. Kuro just says shit. He looks you in the eye and nods, as if agreeing with himself. Yeah, her. Hmm, the dead man's clothes were in the trash container. How did they get there? 
Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. I need to know. It could lead to... The, it could be a lead in the investigation. Someone may have tampered with the murder scene. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. Hmm. All right, entertain me. What's so great about these pants? Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in Mirova by scientists. Pants scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. He unzips his jacket to give you a quick peek at the plastic wrapped pants. They are graphite black and look brand new. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. Coach Physical Instrument endorses these pants. They are tartan ready. They will also make you into an idiot. Mm. Wait, I asked you what happened to his clothes. You must have seen them lying around. Look. Kuno ain't seen shit lying around, except for that f up there. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent, but his expression couldn't say, I told you so, any louder. I might be interested in the pants. Let's talk about this later. All right, pig up. Shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's going to steal all your money, Kuno. As you can see... Kuno and C don't trust ya. Can't do business without trust. There's more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. There was also a mug in the trash. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Mmm. Yes, does this quaint better not taken out of its historical context mug have anything to do with it? Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker because he's the clothes fucker? I can't hear you, Kuno. Speak louder, Kuno. And that's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone has tampered with the crime scene, cleaned up some of it. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. He nods in approval. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno f Yeah, get your bacon shit away! Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo! Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face! Kuno, there's a stack of Eatonite back there. That's just some shit roofing gimps left behind, lazy dinks. There it is. That strange feeling again. As if there was more than meets the eye about that pile of roofing material. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, some shit gimps left behind. Were those gimps left handed? Uh, sure. The fuck are you talking about? Kuno doesn't know what handed gimps they wear. Trying to get you to talk gimp, Kuno. Don't talk. You can't hide it. I see without vision, with my inner eye. So you say, but I saw past the veil? The fucking well! What are you talking about? Ask me a normal question, pig! They're trying to make you feel stupid, Kuno! You glance again at the roofing material in front of the shack. Yes, you should go back there. Hmm. There's a stack of Etonite back there. That's just some shit roofing gimps left behind, lazy dinks. There it is. That strange feeling again. As if... 
There was more than meets the eye about that pile of roofing material. You can't hide it. I see with that vision with my inner eye. Inner eye? Fuck are you talking about? Ask me a normal question, pig. They're trying to make you feel stupid, Kuno. You glance again at the roofing material in front of the shack. Yes, you should go back there. I may have some questions later. For now, let's talk about something else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? Mmm, Kuno, is that some kind of gang name? Yeah, Kuno's in a fucking gang. In a bang gang. Kuno bangs for Magie, bangs for Mazda, bangs for Revachol. Watch out, Kuno, he's trying to fiddle you. He's gonna put his hands on you. The thing behind the fence starts squealing shrill and violent like a fire alarm. The sound gets louder as the child shouts at the windows overlooking the yard. Help! He's got the Kuno help! I'm just gonna leave. Yeah? Get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Bang! <laughs> got fucked by the Kuno. We alright? You wanna get fucked again? Come back! Hey! Psst! Who, me? Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. How come there's a word on the street? You keep saying things like down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impel all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket. Literally murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. I haven't said anything like that. Okay, not in so many words. But don't deny it. You're about to rip off that mask of social democracy and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that will devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? It's too tiring. I don't have it in me. I'm beat down and broken. Very well. I guess no one will build communism then. Tell the working man it's over. Unless anyone has objections. Anyone? Anyone else? There's no one. Okay then, lie down and let the water carry you downstream. Goodbye, communism. Yes, so, uh, five Superstar Cop, Apocalypse Cop Zero, Sorry Cop Two, Boring Cop Zero, Communist Four. Whoa, that's probably why we got that thought. Fascist Two, Ultra Liberal Four, Moralist One, Good Cop, Bad Cop. Six on a two people killed. Well, that's not changed. Hmm, okay. He made the call reporting the crime. So we should really use. Oh, can we look at the Eater Knight again? An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Eater Knight. Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Eater Knight. That's why they're too orderly. We just robbed boxcars. Uh, pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Neat. Ooh. Uh, can we switch those out? Okay. Is that going to help us at all? I don't think it is. An empty tube of mag magnesium supplement. 
A silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Are you a really good detective? I wasn't thinking about it, I swear. I was thinking about justice. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere. Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However... He points to the ladder in the corner. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path the local kids use. Ooh. Uh, what's that? Oh, Mons. The poster says, get out of the way or get bucked up. Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. Oh, there's a coat there. Oh, okay, so that's the that's the other side of the wall. Okay. Can we get the stuff here? The doorway is going to collapse soon. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. No, oh, Kim. Yes. No, no, Kim. I, I just want to... Oh. We actually have enough to pay Gart for tomorrow. And bucket. Oh, postcard. Grand Curon 37. Nose of third. okay. I think we probably do need to heal morale. Uh, oh, money. Okay, uh, let's heal some morale. Can we do anything here? Uh, I can't go to the door. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Look, Lieutenant. Point to the flapping cloak. Someone left his cloak behind. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. He judges the drop. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Savoir faire. It is low. But we are going. Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to need to take some clothes off. Do you really think this cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it... He looks over the ledge of the cold pavement below. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide. Hmm, okay, not now. Several fairers need two. Alright. Uh, savoir faire. We're at negative two. Because of the shoes and the trousers. So, if we take them off. Can we get to that a now? A cloak is still Forty-two percent. Challenging. No one has claimed it for their own. It's a white check. Roll it. Hmm. 
Nope, no. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up here. Hmm. You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. I got you, I got you, Bratan. Let me just adjust your breathing a little bit. There, isn't that better? Uh... There we go. Tugging your tie. God, now I can't breathe at all. Stop doing this to me, Necktie. You were supposed to be a friend. Hey, hey, what's happening? You okay? I'm alright, Kim. I, I just... I can't breathe. It's okay. You're just having a little panic attack. Try to breathe as slowly as you can, alright? The necktie lets go a little. It's a vicious grip easing around your neck. Colors return to the world around you. Thanks. I think it's working. Good. We can always come back when you're feeling better. It's just a cloak after all. Okay... Uh, right, do we have a point? Or do we? Do we have a skill? Oh, we don't have a skill point. We're very close to getting one, though. Yeah, we can't level up. Um, mm. Better put some things back on. Okay, let's go back down. Could we talk to Kuno? Would that give us enough points? We need five points. Ooh, all right, let's do it. Fuck, does Kuno care? Kuno, I found your shack. Point to the shack. Ooh, empathy. Legendary. Figure on what's going on with this kid. Ah. Uh, yeah, Kuno, I found a shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack? It was closed for 5,000 years? How the fuck did you get in? Hmm, I pushed the panels aside, Kuno. And then what? You fucking there? You fucking Kuno's kingdom? He's trying to fuck at you again, Kuno! What was with the pig's head? Oh, that! Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Demo tape? Like some kind of musician? Yeah, Kuno plays on snuff radio, fucks pigs, live, fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. I found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. It was with a tube of magnesium. Magnesolum, Kuno. It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? He looks at you. Like you just pointed at the sun and asked what it was. You could use them. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. Come on, it's just magnesium. Don't mystify it. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed on playing with your choo-choo. He looks at you, eyes bulging. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. Could I get into the harbour from the roof? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got a fly, pig. I tried that. It didn't go so well. Kuno knows. Kuno and C saw you shit yourself. It's okay, pig. Not everyone can face the fear Kuno style. 
That's all there is to it then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. Uh, is that my code up there? I don't think we're going to get anything. Um, yeah, is that my code up there? Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno surprised you've still got your head after all that. After all what? Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secret. Kuno's not snitching. He's saying you climbed up there. He probably saw you do it. I've heard enough of this. Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Oh, okay. So we could try it again and we have a skill point. So we could pop that in if we need to. Although I'm not ooh, not confident about not confident about failing again. If we take that much damage. Okay, so a tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. Oh, okay. Right. So we got plus one backed up by physical instrument. Uh, can we... Oh, we can't. Uh, not right now. Okay, we need to take off the shoes. Okay, now what do we have? A tarpaulin cloak is still caught in the rain. 58. No one has claimed it for their own. The savoir faire. Uh... Level up. 72. Oof. Do it. Nope. No. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up here. Mm, I'll make the jump next time. Sure. Just be careful, okay? Looks like you almost strained a muscle there. Okay. Yeah, we, we can't do that now. So we're definitely going to need another... Uh, another point of self affair. Probably should put my pants back on. Thirty percent chance of failure, and we got it. That's okay. I mean, we're only we're not even through the first day, so so there's nothing around here. Ah, uh, huh. we can do a bunch of things. Oh yeah, we could radio in. Inside. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pick up the radio. The frequency tabler lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Lieutenant. Uh... Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. Come in Delta 10, this is Firewalker Copy. Come in Dispatch, come in Dispatch. Hi Alice, this is the officer from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Could you run a serial number for me from a pair of armored boots? Sir Officer, what's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. 
E50 100 1000. The make and model of the armor is Fairweather T500 Victor Echo. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. Okay. Was there anything else? Hmm. I need you to connect me with a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Hmm. Yes. Of course. What is the number, officer? Kim, didn't God give you Sylvie's number? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs, or wait patiently. Oh, marching rhythm on the thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Uh, Sylvia, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling and Rags. Hmm. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions for you about your last days at work. Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. Uh... Or was it you who called the police? No, not me. Uh, do you know who made the call? No, sorry, I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Hmm. All right, next question. Yeah, go on. Uh, you quit your job at the Whirling, why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Hmm, oh. why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? Uh, alright, I won't push you on this. Are you ever coming back to work? Maybe, I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. Wow. Uh, I think we might have done some bad things. Do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? I think I got everything I need, thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Wait, what does she seem angry with you? No, she doesn't have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy. Like Gart. Hmm. We failed on an 83% chance and a 70% chance. Yeah, it's definitely some other guy. A guy like Gart. You know women and their constant problems. Yak, yak, nag, nag. How's one supposed to get the love going like that that's where you step in your lieutenant love matchmaker extraordinaire help the poor girl out lest she turns into a spinster oh my god not a spinster yeah she's the one with robbing needs just playing hardball with the goods women are just transactional I'm happy to help, but maybe I could do so without all this internalized misogyny. I... Wah... 
We're probably never talking to her again. Yeah, sure. Uh, playing hardball. Oh yeah, my point exactly. You know how they are. Transactional and hysteric. Loony broads. You know what you've got to do. First, you've got to calm her down. Tell her you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with Gart himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? Uh, Daddy is going to take you on his lap, little darling. Uh, to the microphone. Are you still there, kiddo? Listen, I've got everything under control. Please, no. I don't want to say any of those things. Refuse the love quest, although it's wonderful. Oh my god. Um, I've got everything under control. No. What? You and Gart, right? A little trouble under the sheets. Say no more. Papa's got this. Big Papa. I know, baby, I know. It's just that you've got that sweet woman-child thing that makes men go crazy, especially a man like Gart. Oh my God. You and Gart, right? Big Papa. Oh, oh God. Please, just stay out of my life. I've got a hunch your love life is about to get... Uh, take a very pleasant turn. Give the lieutenant a knowing wink. Holy shit. What? What is it? You'll see, lieutenant. You will see. Wink again. Call was dominated by the other party. Anything else, officer? It's on. The love quest is on. Too late, everyone. It's on. Take it to Gart now. I have a feeling Gart actually likes Sylvie. And I have no idea now what we're doing. Uh, connect me to Sylvia again. Anything back from the ICP. Ignore Alice and press the button. They will saved. Oh, we gotta do it. As always, it's DJ Mesh and Felicio. And you're listening to Street Freaks FM. Bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. Right away. The lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says. Someone must have been messing with the radio or maybe picked up a random frequency. You wanted a prime line, right? He's still avoiding your gaze and his ears glow red. Huh. Speed Freaks FM, huh? Look him in the eye. Oh. Uh, is that what it was called? Right. You don't want to get into this. No problem. Nothing to get into, really. But sure, uh, let's focus on the important things. He pats the motor carriage. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Mm, close the door. Indirect modes of taxation. Turns out, those financial oversight committee gangsters stuffed millions of hard-earned dividends away in the last place anyone thought to look. The hearts and minds of everyday River Sholians. You need to spread that deregulation gospel to the people. Tell them about that foreign fair tax. Preach that 98% gross burden. Preach it, preacher man. Set the brothers free. Taxes are racist. Ultra-liberal dialogue options give plus one real, negative one empathy. Thinks he's a hustler or something. Oh, so we get money for ultra-liberal dialogue options. Oh. That's interesting. What else have we got? 
Uh, he'll pick like clothes and trash. Run the number on the victim's armor. Okay, so that's running at the moment. Uh, victim's tattoos. Ask around about the tattoos, possible meaning. Ask him to tell you about the case. Police officers get briefed about the cases they're given. Oh, we yeah, we need the brief still. Buy foul pants from Guno. Talk to guard, Lieutenant Love. Gart plus Sylvie? Question mark. Something's going on here. You need to help a brother out with his love woes. Go to Gart and give him some solid advice. Tell him how it is with women. Holy shit. Uh, I think Harry and I are probably the worst people in the world. So we are both sailing, sailing the maelstrom of ignorance on that one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we don't have anything drama, physical instrument, not Half-Life plus one suggestion. Okay. Okay. It's now... Oops. So it's now eight o'clock. Oh, hello. Hello again, sweetie. How'd you like to roll with me? I don't know if you've noticed, but I... Uh, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Hmm. I hope you're right. I hope it's not too bad. You know where we are, right? Uh, we're dead. Haunting each other. We're ghosts. A war zone on the edge of the world. I don't really know. Some city hotel. We're in Revachol. The Whirling and Rags Cafeteria? It was on my keys. That's right. And where is the Whirling and Rags Cafeteria itself located? In Revachol. Yes, indeed. We are in the fine city of Revachol. Ravishol is dis uh, disgraced capital of the world, something like that. Yes, great. See, we're getting somewhere. What else do you know about our city of splendor? Tattered as she may be. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Ravishol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Ravishol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. There's a pause as she studies your expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Hmm. Spring of 51. That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Mm, cop living under the cop regime? Radios are being used to control uh, people's minds and distort our perception of reality, concealing our true masters, foreigners, and women. We're governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest market. Our leaders are fierce warriors who traverse the plains and steeds. I'd like to think it's the dictatorship of the proletariat, but something tells me it's not. Some kind of democracy, maybe? Hmm... Democracy. Nope. Sadly not. Revachol is what's called a zone of control, under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is market-driven. If there's no government, how come there are cops? Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The 
Status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. I like the way we're asking this kindly lady questions about where we are while shining a torch directly into her eyes. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. What is the revolution you mentioned? A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. Hmm. But I'm a cop. Whatever it was hasn't stopped me. Of course, sweetie. I, I really don't know how to explain it better. I'm just a poor woman, she thinks. What do I know of these things? And how can I help you? You could tell me more. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. She turns to the lieutenant. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. You seem to be in a chair. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height or a grenade explosion. I'm sorry. It was rude of me to mention the wheelchair. Let's move on. That's quite all right. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. There is no bitterness in her voice. She accepted the curiosity her condition inspires a long time ago. Hmm. Okay. I gotta get going now. Uh, what do we get? We have an item. Oh, the kind green ape pen. A pen with a green ape head on one end. The ape has closed its eyes, a kind expression adorning its face. It seems to be meditating. We could have used that pen to... Okay, yeah, we took... We took Kim's pen. We could have used the green ape pen. But we didn't have it at that point. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, get a reality lowdown. You have no idea where you are. Lena, encourage you to ask others to explain the world uh, to you in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich person. Rich people are educated. Oh, yes, we can, we can go back to the boat. Okay. Right. Uh, I think what I might do is leave it there for the time being. So if you like this, definitely leave a little like. Leave a subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you want notifications, dingle the bingle. If you don't want notifications, don't click the bell. And I'll tell you what, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>